I'm going to give you an example now where we can use our formula for gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy to work out a question which on the face of it seems like we don't have enough information. But if you just work through it using the formula you know, kinetic energy equals half mv squared, half the mass, times the velocity squared, and gravitational potential energy equals the mass times gravity times the height of the object, you can actually work out something which seems tricky. So let me give you an example of this. We might be given a formula which, or some figures, which tell us the, for example, the gravitational potential energy of that ball, if we work it out. So for example, let's say that they say that the, the ball is 500 grams and it has a height of 5 meters. Okay, and in the question they've given us gravity is 10. Okay, now that's information they've given us. So a ball is thrown to a height of 5 meters, it's 500 grams, and it has a gravity of 10. How about this for a question? Calculate the maximum velocity of the ball. Falling. What? Hang on. We've got we've got a three formula there, which gives us the gravitational potential energy. And mass times gravity times height doesn't have velocity in it. So where where can we work out the velocity? And this is really nice and subtle and quite cool, because energy cannot be created or destroyed. So if we look at this ball here, what we know is that when it's got a maximum potential energy here, that energy is the maximum energy that it will have. Okay? And if it's got that energy, when it falls down, no more energy can be devoted or transformed into kinetic. So the energy it's got at the top there, when it falls, will be converted into kinetic energy. So we actually, and I'm going to show you this now, have been given the kinetic energy it has, and we've been given the mass. So let's just work through this. We've got a 500 gram ball, a height of five meters, gravity is 10. So we can work out the gravitational potential energy of the ball at that height to be 0.5 kilograms, 500 grams, times 10, times five, which is, 25 joules. Okay? So, use your calculator all the time just to make sure that you're right. There we've got 25 joules. Now that is the maximum energy that ball's got. So, if it's converted into kinetic energy on the way down, we now have the kinetic energy equals 25 joules which is equal to half the mass times v squared. We know the mass. So 25 joules equals half times 0.5 kilograms from earlier in the question times the unknown we have, v squared. And if we rearrange this, we get 25 over half times 0.5, which is 0.25, equals v squared. 25 divided by 0.25 is 100. So 100 equals v squared and that is not the velocity, that's the velocity squared. So in order to get the velocity we square root one side to get rid of the squared and the square root of 100 is v equals easy peasy 10 meters per second. So let's just see what we've done there. We've been asked in our question for a velocity, even though the terms they've given us allow us to work out the gravitational potential energy only. But using the conservation of energy and the fact that the gravitational potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy, we can actually then insert the gravitational potential energy that we've calculated into the kinetic energy formula leaving only one thing we don't know in the kinetic energy formula, 
which is the velocity squared, which once we've calculated uh, the formula, we square root it to get velocity. And there it is, 10 meters per second. I think that's a really nice, subtle way of using the formula once you know them to work out velocities or masses or energies in a way which you might have thought you'd never been able to do. But knowing the formula, you work out what you've been given, work out the formula that you need to use, and then really it is actually very simple and quite elegant.